Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another City Skylines Let's Play, and we are back in Oridon. Now, I just wanted to say after the first video that I am absolutely overwhelmed with all the love and support and the lovely comments that you guys have put on that first video. So I just want to genuinely thank all of you right from the bottom of my heart for all the likes and the comments and the subs uh, I just truly truly appreciate it I just want to say a really big shout out to Overcharged Egg for sharing my first video what a truly amazing guy he is for doing that so thank you as the last video was my first ever video, there was a lot that I took away from it. And one of the things in particular was that there was a lot of the detailing that I didn't finish in this particular area. So I want to make sure from now on that when we do an episode, we're finishing that area to the absolute fullest of its potential. Obviously with the caveat that it may be bulldozed further down the line to allow for different infrastructure as we go. But there were some finishing touches on this area that when I looked at it afterwards, I just thought had to be put in. So in between episodes, I have gone round and done a little bit of touching up here and there off camera. So let's start by going round and seeing what I did. So on the high street here, I finished off the back of this commercial area. So adding in a police car precinct that you can see there on the left. And also just adding in a touch of detail behind those commercial buildings, as well as adding in these gardens that you can see here. And I particularly like how actually Surface Painter has worked really well in this instance, for example, to make a nice little uh, landscape garden there. We've also added in gardens in the same fashion for these houses that you can see along the back here, bordering up to that main road, just to finish off their gardens. I've also gone around this district and have historicalised all of the buildings, because actually it kind of grew in in quite a nice fashion. There's nothing here that stood out to me as, oh no, you're completely different vibes i like I like these are all relatively similar in style a little bit of variation but just enough to make the neighborhood pop i think the other thing i've done is also as well just come off and finish off the back of this commercial unit here as well in exactly a very similar style so just adding a few props and decor in here and fencing just to finish off the back of these buildings as you can see so last episode we started the city, I got through our first few milestones, we built this high school area that you can see here, um, super busy on the pedestrian bridges, I'm loving, loving all the pedestrian traffic that is going around this city, loving watching that. We also started our first few residential neighbourhoods, so this one in particular is, is pretty well finished off. And we started this commercial waterfront that you can see here. Now there's still quite a bit to do in terms of the waterfront and I am contemplating whether to put keys in or not. And of course we've got to finish it off down this side. So that will come in a later episode. But for now, I think the key priority is to firstly get a couple of parks in because we failed to do that in the last episode. And then also work on our industrial area because there is massive industrial demand at the moment huge demand for jobs so that is the next priority and the main focus of this particular episode so parks first this little spot here i think is absolutely screaming out for it because as you can see at the moment we've got absolutely nothing other than parks around the high school that you can see there so i'm thinking here we're going to put in one of the large playgrounds um, which fits in quite nicely into this particular area yeah it has that sort of rural rural suburb type vibes um so what i will do is connect up those paths because with this asset it just screams out for path connections obviously they're ready made there at the back so you've got to just be obliged and and fix that up really and this area works actually pretty well for that and actually quite nicely we have these little gaps ready made for it so we can go ahead and put the path in there but also what i do want to do is just run it back between these houses a bit of a meandering path here um, and coming out here now we still do need to go around this neighborhood historicalized buildings select the assets because there's a few growing in that i'm not too sure about so namely this one here I'm not sure this kind of townhouse vibe really fits this spread out suburb that we can see here for now we've got our park in there so hopefully that will start helping to level up some of these houses the next thing i want to do before we get onto the industry as well is just figure out the road network and extend that out a little bit further so I know that this main road is going to go on into the downtown. So let's just continue that on for now. So I'd like it to come around the end of this lake like this 
and then extend out straight um, so that we've got a decent amount of room on the right hand side of it for creating more suburbs and more residential here. Now this road here on reflection after the last episode as well I realised is just not going in exactly the direction that we want it to. So this is going to go out here onto some islands so we're going to have a small road that brings them out to these two islands and those two islands are going to have some higher wealth residential on it so we'll create some kind of gated community looking vibes for that particular area so for this road what i really want to do is just swing it around here and actually bring it back to the main collector that we've got in at the moment if we bring it straight up like so then we can make a nice connection back to the collector there now in terms of these roads here we're going to continue on this grid pattern out this way so just bring it up to the collector there like so and we have anarchy on because i've historicalized those buildings that's why they're sitting on the road so we can sort them out in a minute and we'll just bring that out a little bit like a cul-de-sac there and then what i will do with the elementary school is just bring that up to connect here so that there's a connection and then i'm thinking this area that we have here is going to actually be a park behind the elementary school so what i will do is go ahead and put in a park district area and now we do still need to sort out the districts and the naming uh, so again any suggestions please do drop them in the comments below so we've got sunset me meadows that is not going to stay as that for the moment but yeah we'll have a nice park area within there now just in terms of other small parks as well because this area is really really lacking in them what i am going to do is put a small playground just up here against these houses here so that'll just help again to level them up and increase our population as we go now coming back to the big park firstly it's going to be a city park here but it's going to be just a small one so there's no way it's ever going to reach level five for this particular area because it's just simply not big enough so what I'm going to use is the small main gate and I'm going to just put this down here on the main road like so. Uh, that gives us access to other assets within the park area. So now I've got side gates as well and I will again put a couple of these in so that there's decent access from various different points. So what I'm going to do now is just join up these paths, get a nice path connection going through this particular area and just a bit of a, a meandering path again nothing too uh, grid like or specific because like i said this this park there is definitely no way that it's ever going to level up to level five so we're not going to fit in some of the large assets which require kind of straight line paths around them really like the chessboard for example we do have a park plaza though which I will put in right in the middle because that's going to help us to level it up a little bit and without it we'd kind of we'd, we'd struggle to get up to even level two. Um, we have a nice cafe as well which I'll put in the middle next to the park plaza and likewise the toilets there just so we've got a little bit of a hub going on in the middle and I'm just going to use move it just to touch these up a little bit so they're right up against the path and we don't get any of that ruined texture between the path and these particular assets. Now the other thing we have is the park information booth which I think again we'll put that here just so we've got this central area to our park right here. Um, so we have the general shape of the park we do have enough entertainment to get us up to the next level so that's absolutely fine for now so what i will do is just a quick little bit of detailing including some fences um, some play equipment and some more foliage around the park
I think for now that'll be it for the city park. So we will create a bigger park area somewhere else which will level up to level five and have all of the other types of buildings in it. But for this one, it's just not big enough. It's a small local city park for these residents living nearby. So I think this will absolutely do. What we might do when we have leveled up and a different park is come back and add in the gazebo assets, for example. A couple of those would look pretty good in this particular area. But I think for now, that is absolutely fine and that'll get us up the first level at least. So in terms of park coverage, uh, we are not too bad at the moment. So that one, I've just popped in another dog park over here to give access for these residents. So that should sort itself out soon. These are still a little bit red, um, but we can come back and have a think about that. There'll definitely be something around here, around the medical clinic as well that we can add, which will probably help out with that particular area. But for now, I think that will do. And what we'll do is head over to the industrial area to sort out this absolute mess that's uh, gone on here. So the general plan is to have quite a large industrial area here, but using the mostly the vanilla assets. I've got a couple of workshop assets to add into it for extra effect. And I'm gonna use Rico to convert a couple of office assets into industrial assets so that they can fit in there because we i mean we could plop them in as office assets already but we don't have university level of education so we'd suffer with the not enough educated workers warning if we did that right now so instead of that we're going to use some of the assets to get the look and feel that we want but convert them to industry for now so yeah, the general plan is to have an industrial area here, which is going to use vanilla assets to make it look like one big factory or one cohesive area, rather than this kind of mishmash that you get from just zoning in generic industry. We will also move power and sewage over to this side and have separate little developments for them over here. And we will as well, we'll demolish the forestry area, but we will keep that and redevelop that and select the assets a bit more carefully to make it have the look and feel that we want. So to start off with, I am going to pause the game for this because I'm going to move the power and sewage almost straight away. But I definitely want to be thinking about road networks here because this road is going to upgrade to a four lane road because if this is a reasonably large industrial area, it's going to have quite a lot of traffic flowing through it. So this area, I'm gonna upgrade it to a four lane and we're gonna bring it around this way to go over the highway so that we've got a connection over this way as well because otherwise we're getting this kind of cul-de-sac, um, slightly dangerous vibe with all the industrial traffic from here flowing through this roundabout, which is not ideal and not what we want. So if we have it coming around this way and over the highway, we could at a later date as well, also add an additional slip road straight onto the highway for the industrial area. What that will also do as well is give us access to trains. So I'm definitely thinking when we get to the trains point, we're gonna have a cargo hub over this side of the highway as well, because the train line is nice and neatly over there. So we can definitely bring that round to form the train network for cargo over this side as well. So having that quite large collector road connection over to there is super important. So before I start anything, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. I make sure collisions turned off for this because I can then just move the fences afterwards. We're gonna use the four lane industrial road um, and upgrade this whole stretch there. Now all of this is gonna go, so I'm just gonna stop there for now and then just use move it to get these back off the road and back into place. Okay, so Next, what we are going to do is just extend this road on out because I want it to sit quite nice and neatly and at a right angle to this highway. So I will just for now, just plop in a four lane road coming straight off there, making sure that that is absolutely straight. We're going to demolish all of this that we've got here. So if I press play, people are not going to have any jobs to go to, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to press play just yet. So we're gonna make sure that this road is at a nice right angle to the main highway. So I think coming it in just slightly further down so we've got a little bit more room for that forestry like so. I'm gonna just bring that up for now. Just get rid of the end of this road and actually then bring that straight down there so we get a perfect right angle on that particular corner. I'll just trim that back slightly and then put this road in again so that we get a nice smooth connection here like so and we won't worry about that path for now 
And then this corner as well, I'd like that to be a little bit more rounded. So we'll just use move it to bring that in and snap that into place like so. So what we do want this side is some nice areas for the power and water. So using an industrial road, I'm just going to bring this out at a nice flowy, flowy road there. And then what we'll do is have a road off here, which is going to come through to the sewage treatment plant. I'm just going to convert that industrial road into a gravel road because I quite like how they transition from one to the other. And we'll bring that out like so. Then if we pick up our sewage treatment plant, we can move that over to here. So we'll just have the one in for now, but there's plenty more room to grow in this particular area. So the next thing we want in here as well is a power plant area. So I'm just going to bring this out and round down here for the moment. Um, and we'll get the coal power plant and move that over here because we haven't unlocked any of the other power plant options as of yet. So this area will be a work in progress and something that we work on in a later episode. But for now, we'll put that there and we will be doing a power plant, a small power plant, I would add, build just in that particular area. Now the main focus of this episode is going to be this particular area so what we want to do is use the vanilla assets and turn it into a nice factory looking area so something that looks like it's well organized so we need to lay out an initial roadway network like so just for now and then we're going to place in a couple of our key assets that we want at the as the focal point of the entrance to the factory here we will have another exit over this side as well which we'll put in afterwards but the asset that i want to use is actually one that i rarely use because i'm not i'm really not keen on any of to be honest the vanilla industrial assets but this one i do think actually looks pretty cool when you merge it and it looks like an old brick factory and that's the sort of type of vibes that I think we want to go for here so that being the focal point and then some other areas around it so yeah that being the entrance I think fits quite nicely and then there's also these little assets that go with it pretty well that can look like a bit of a security gate entrance so I think if we spin that one round so it's facing that way, and again, we can come through and detail this all up with a load of fencing, uh, which makes it look pretty good. So we can have that as a kind of security entrance for there. And again, the detailing will really make this pop, I think, ultimately. So what we will do here is just bring the road network down this way. And there is another factory asset that goes pretty well with these, with a big chimney stack, this one. Um, which again we can kind of make look like it forms part of this same building here and I'm thinking actually what we will do is just bring this road down very very slightly so we've got more of a forecourt in front of it like so so it will still be connected to the road because it's close enough but we then get this nice chimney stack right in the middle of those factory buildings there which I think goes together pretty well now what I'd like to do as well is bring a road up here and round this way, a ro Ooh, not like that, uh, a little bit straighter, um, and round this way, just using the one unit road here to change up the patterns a little bit and make it look more like a back street. And there is again another asset, which is this one, which is a, has a really big chimney stack to it, which I think again with the brick goes reasonably well with these other assets to form, make it look like it's part of one development and one unit. And this space here is screaming out for a little bit of parking lot roads. So that is what we will use here. And again, we can just use move it to adjust this all so it's in exactly the place that we want it like so and we'll come through with surface painter to fill in these gaps and use props fencing that sort of thing to make it look like a bit more heavy security vibes and a bit more like just a, a single development by itself so we've got a little parking lot in there so i'm thinking now opposite this as well we'll bring out a little bit of rural road so a bit of a, a bit of a gravel road just to change up again the textures that we have here and there is another little asset which I think goes reasonably well, which is this one. Um, and what we will do is use move it so we get them right nice up close and make it look like it's a bit more of a terraced unit here. 
So slightly lower, but they look like they could be workhouses, outhouses for this main big factory that we're seeing in the center here. And I think over here, what we'll do here is put in some tanks, something a little bit more heavy industry looking. So we get a slight change in the pattern that we've got going here. And particularly next to those chimney stacks, I feel like that sort of thing is needed there. So what I will do here again is extend our road network out. So I'm just going to bring that out further that way. And again, similarly with this road, I'll bring this up and round. And then we're going to bring this down this way to form another connection on this particular road there. So I think what we'll bring into this area is something more modern looking like this asset, which kind of look like it's been an addition to the old factory later on. Um, and what I would like to do, though, as well, is bring that back up on its own separate road here. So we'll use the one unit roads again, create a little junction um, just with a small bit like that, because then it allows us to do a few more detailing options within it. So if I bring that back to there as well, what we can do with this one unit road is just bring it back through and round this way. Now I'm thinking on this side again, there is this other brick factory asset, which goes reasonably well as well. It's a little bit too close to the back of those buildings there for my liking. So we'll just bring that back slightly further away um, and, and look at what could possibly go in there. But I think for here, what we will do as well is bring a road off this way um, and then actually back round like so. And from here, we're actually going to use some of the workshop assets that I've got, which are these warehouses, freight terminal storage. So instead of this, you could use the warehouses um, that come within the industry's DLC pack, and there'd be a decent alternative to this. But I just like how these look and feel uh, within this particular development. So again, it adds just another modern spin to these old looking brick factories up the front. And down in this corner, we're going to bring in quite a large car park. So using parking lot roads again, we'll bring that in here like so and just use Move It again to make sure that that's, the connections are all nice and neat. We can use Surface Painter up here to fill in these little uh, slight bits of terrain tearing that we see going on. But we'll do that within the detailing section coming up. Because I think any factories, when you look at them on Google Earth, there is an awful lot of parking within them. And also in this particular area at the moment, we don't have any transport options for our Sims. So we do need to make sure that we are um, giving them ample parking so that they can get here. I do have parking AI turned on within Traffic Manager as well. So what I'll do now is just go through and select a few more assets to fill out our spaces and complete our road network down to the main road there. And then I will be right back. Okay, so we have put in all of the assets, I think, for this area that are needed. So 
what we have done as well is put in loads more parking but also used Rico Revisited to change some office buildings into industry so they are technically industry although they are part of the office buildings pack make this look like a bit of a head office area for the rest of it so what I have done is taken quite a few of the same assets and tried to combine them, merge them, move them right up close together to make them look like one cohesive asset. And things like this, it's just being careful about where they are. So for example here you can see you can drive almost all the way through this big white building in the middle here. So making sure we've got roads both sides so that sort of thing makes sense. It's quite important as well. So I have taken more of the brick factory assets as well here and combine them to make one large factory building as well which I just think looks a lot neater than letting them grow in by themselves. So what I will do now is go around and detail the area. So what the type of thing that we are going to do is we're going to use a lot of surface painter to fill in some of these gaps like we really don't want green gaps appearing anywhere uh, within this particular build. It should be heavy industrial kind of vibes and that sort of thing so we definitely don't want these green areas appearing here so we'll be going around using a lot of surface painter for those areas but then also using props and the such like and a lot of fencing so i really want this to have heavy heavy security vibes to it and there's some quite ni nice assets that you can find in find it um, so a gate prop in particular uh, this one here so that's why i've converted these roads to one unit roads so that we can add this one in um, and what I do need to do as well is come down and take off the street lights and all that kind of jazz as well. But if we add this in, then it just helps to give it a little bit more heavy security look and feel. Um, and we'll definitely be going around with a lot of fencing, fencing in the whole area to make it look like it is one development. And then adding in a lot of props as we go. So what I will do is do that in the time lapse and I'll come through and show what I have done.
Okay, guys. So I think we... That took a long time, not going to lie. <laughs> I think we finally have our little factory area. So yeah, just to run down what I did. So I have surrounded it entirely by fence. So hopefully it gives that secure secure area kind of vibes and we've got the gates going on at either entrance i actually used a carport carport asset here um to create a little bit of a security entrance way i've done a lot of plopping uh the decals on the road to make it look a little bit more run down we've got lots of container areas like so i did put in a tiny tiny bit of green here i thought for the entrance way with a few benches outside so those are the people working in the main factory here have a nice little place to go to for their lunch um, and i do quite like this little area as well just using the gravel to change up the textures a little bit um, from all the pavement and all the concrete just to create a little storage unit area like so so there's a few different areas like that another little storage container unit area there as well and then we go up to the back where we've got our main head offices with the huge car park here. So all in all, I think it is, has come together all right, actually. And then we have surrounded it by trees just to give it that bit of noise buffer. I wanted to keep some clear spaces so it's not just complete dense forestry. Um, but I think, I think it's overall not looking too bad at least i think we can certainly agree that it looks a lot better than when you just randomly zone industrial in and all the different assets just don't go together and don't really fit together so this looks hopefully you'll agree a little bit more like one compound and one unit um a little bit more true to life so the next thing I did want to come on to today as well is adding back in the forestry area that we destroyed. So let's just make sure my district is still there. We do actually have the specialisation on this time, which we do. So let's just extend that out a little bit. So what I would like to do is put it in pretty similarly again, just on this other side of the road. But we're just going to be a bit more careful about asset selection now and getting it in the way that we want. Because like I mentioned on a previous episode, it is still really good to have this forestry industry here, the zoned forestry industry, rather than just the DLC, uh, because it does help the generic industry and supply them with goods that actually you don't, you wouldn't supply them with, with just the industry's DLC content. So let's go ahead and look at what forestry assets we do have. And there are quite a few barns and that sort of thing. Um, which I definitely want to get in here. But yeah, this one looks really nice. I really like some of these forestry assets. The detail on them is is pretty good, like all the wood slats that you see there and the such like is pretty good. And what we will do as well is clear out some of these trees along this road so that you get a decent view into some of the processing buildings here. But what I'd like to do in general is put processing buildings up along this side of the road and then have the forestry units up on this side. Now, the one trouble with these is that, yeah, the type of trees that it gives us just aren't right. They don't, it doesn't look like it fits with the rest of the boreal theme. So what we can do here is use Bob, beautify our builds uh, just to replace those trees. So they're olders at the moment. And I know actually what we'd rather have them as is a Douglas fir. Uh, which fits more with the surrounding areas and we've got quite a few of them in so if we just have a look at replacing them here uh, let's just get rid of that and have a look what it looks like I mean that already looks so much better and looks like it more fits in with this particular environment here so I'm quite happy with that actually and I think we'll leave that I think the height of the trees as well is pretty good for a forestry area so now, whenever we plop in one of those assets, it will come up with that tree, like so. So in terms of the road network, what I would like is just a really small area. This is nothing big at all. So I'm just going to follow this out down this way slightly. And again, we'll just continue this straight road up this way so that we get some of those processor buildings up alongside the back of the road there, because they do look good like that. And before I forget, let's just clear out some of these trees from here so that we get the view into the back of these processing buildings. And we'll certainly leave them out that side to make sure that we've still got the raw products there. 
Um, Because if you get rid of too many trees, like I probably have done here, yeah, you see the green, the dark green area has moved back a little bit, but I think we'll be okay there. I think we'll get away with it. So let's put in some more of the tree assets and then also have a look at what processor buildings we've got. Um, now this is going to look a little bit, a little bit mishmash, but it is only a small area, so um, hopefully it will come together quite nicely. Yeah, see these assets are good, but again, I quite like one set further back away from the road. So if we just change up the road network here, that will help to give a little bit of variation. So just coming off a little, a little split off like that will help to add a little bit of variation into the industry area. And then you see from the road, there's less repetition from what you're seeing. So I think we'll do the same thing here. Just add in a little side road like that. And actually that has connected so that pedestrians can walk across, which is pretty handy. Um, there We are limited in our choice of buildings here, which is frustrating because, like I said, some of them are really, really nice. So it'd be great if there were a few more different options. But this is this is what we got. So let's work with it. So... Um, yeah, see, they're really, really, really nice little assets. Very, very detailed. Love it. And some of them actually look pretty good when they're all intermingled with the forestry. But the type of thing I'd like to do here is just get those white buildings out front and keep the forest up next to the lake. Because we will eventually have a just a small nature reserve coming around this lake. So I don't want it to be too the view to be too fringed by lots of heavy industry. Like, we have got that big factory area that we've just made going on in the background, which I think makes quite a nice view, but, well, nice nice industrial view, right? <laughs> in fact, I'm actually thinking I may not make this really any bigger. I'll just put in a couple more forestry plots down here, and I think, actually, that will probably do. And what we'll do, again, is just put in a couple of the much smaller decals into here, uh, these little wood piles and such like just to add a tiny bit more effect so if we just bring in a tiny tiny bit of forestry fencing I think that would do and in fact I'm kind of looking at it now and going I'm not going to do that both sides I'll leave it open on that other side there we'll just bring it back slightly here to close off that corner and again similarly here what I might do is leave that open so it almost looks like it could be an entrance in and then we can as well just use a little bit of gravel to form a pathway like so and if we just move this over slightly so it's out of the way it'll be good if we can get that tree back yeah there we go um then that looks like it's a almost like an entrance way into that forestry bit there actually what i will do as well is just find that tree and fill in some of these gaps to make it look like it's more consistent so what we will do here is just use prop line tool to put them in nice and consistently um, just to fill in those gaps so it doesn't look so obviously like blocks of zoned forest the trouble is we've got some of those are the bigger trees there but i don't mind that too much it just helps to merge them in so you can't see those blocks quite as clearly and what i will do here as well is put in another pretend gravel road just behind these forestry areas here um, and again, we'll use a prop line tool just to carry on this pattern so that it just extends them out just that tiny, tiny bit extra. And I know there's other trees in the middle of there, but I think we can get away with that. I might delete that bigger one because that's just looks a little bit strange. Yeah, there we go. And we've got work problems, so <laughs> let's not put in any more industry for now. <laughs> Um, before it all becomes abandoned. So what I will do now, i turn off those traffic lights definitely and actually let's get on some dedicated turning lanes into here as well because I'm anticipating that this is going to be a pretty busy area with all the industry going on here. And it's good to see that other people are using that entrance as well, not just this one. So yeah, we've got a big worker problem. So next episode is going to be sorting out our residential for sure. Um, but let's just finish off with a tiny bit of detailing along this road here uh, to set the edge for this forestry area nicely. And so there we go. So I I had, did get rid of most of the concrete textures actually here and just put in gravel, which I thought looked a little bit better for this forestry area, particularly as we we're using the gravel roads as well. I just added in this car park as well off the workshop, a nice gravel car park there just to make sure that we've got 
car parking access for the workers on this particular area and just added in a couple more decals um a couple of the 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 wooden decals the props there but nice and simple nice and basic but i think it gives a nice edge and a, a different edge to the road compared to this big industrial area we've got the trees just shielding the road from the view there so for today guys that is going to be it so thank you so much for watching again you know still really new to this and still lots to learn so if you do have any suggestions please stick them in the comments any suggestions for names of this di district and this factory as well please do let me know i love trees so i'm kind of thinking it's going to be some kind of tree theme so if you've got any ideas about that do drop them in the comments and of course if you've liked what you've seen please whack that like button give us a like it will really help us out um and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to catch up with the next episode so coming up on the next episode we're definitely going to have a residential expansion we're going to detail out this area here and do lots of residential along the waterfront uh, as we see here and probably potentially start filtering out the residential onto these islands and looking at building some larger more gated community style of housing out there please do tune in and thanks so much for watching i'll leave you with some cinematics catch you again soon bye bye